Well, three places to number nine. So either way, Tommy Sugiato will enter the top 10 on the Destination Dubai rankings. Well, as far as the men's singles is concerned, we only had six of the eight seeds through to the quarter-final stage. One seed lost in the first round. Keshap Parupali lost to Lee Chong Wei, former world number one, a former champion here. And Shrikanth Kadambi, the number five seed, lost in the last 16, and he lost to the man that's in today's final, Tommy Sugiato. And isn't that nice to see four different nations involved at semi-final stage? a wonderful city, Odensup. Ancient city, famous, of course, as the birthplace of Hans Christian Andersen. Famous author of children's fairy tales. Yeah. And we enjoyed a very nice meal last night, didn't we, in part the old part of town? We Went to walked along one of the little cobbled streets in the lovely old restaurant. It was absolutely marvellous. It is a lovely city. Well, I think prior to the women's singles final, didn't I make a bit of a blunder? Didn't I say that she was the only defending champion? Are you sure right? Of course, yeah. I was talking nonsense. You're supposed to put me Chen right. Chen Long is also a Chen defending champion. Chen Long. Two-time defending champion, having won three previous titles, but two consecutive. 2011, he beat Lee Chong Wei, as indeed he did in 2013. In 2014, he beat Song Wan Ho of Korea. Okay, so with Chen Long going for his third consecutive title. Little quiz for you, Steen. Who was the last player to win three consecutive titles in the men's singles here at the Denmark Open? Um, Paul Ekoya. Well done. Very, very good. He had a couple of good years yeah, where he won actually three tournaments in a row. Dutch, German, and Denmark. Um, I think he won two times in a row, all three tournaments. Yeah. Well, he won here in 1993, 94, and 95. So can this man, Chen Long, emulate the BWF president, Paul Eric Boyer Larson, and win three consecutive titles? Of course, the great Morton Frost of Denmark won seven consecutive titles here. From 1980. And winner of the Yonex Sunrise Vietnam Open from Indonesia, Tommy Sugiato. <laughs> Excuse my chuckle. Winner of the Vietnam Grand Prix earlier this year and indeed the Russian Grand Prix, but I think perhaps his World Championship bronze medal would have been a nice way to introduce Tommy Sugiato into the arena because, of course, it was here in Denmark last year that he won his World Championship medal and he lost in the semi-final stage to his opponent of today. So, our court officials for this final Boas and Lars Sain from Denmark, both from Denmark. Tommy Sugiato, there he is, the 27 year old born in West Jakarta. His opponents 
Chen Long, 26, from Hubei province in China. Well, who won the toss there, Steen? Did you notice? No, I didn't. Because whoever won it... They chose side. Chose sides, yes. We didn't think the drift was that significant, no. but obviously the players... These small details are very important. And I actually always think you should choose sides because yeah. there's no point in, in choosing service. I mean, you can score points no matter who serves. Exactly. Under the old scoring system where you had to be serving to score yeah. a point, then there was uh, there was a, an obvious reason behind the choice to, the, to serve. Well, Chen Long's had a remarkable year so far. This is seventh final in 10 tournaments played. He is the world number one. He's won all six previous finals that he's played so far this year, four of them being Super Series. No wonder his win-loss record is so good there. Quarter final, he beat Wei Nan, who in the last 16 beat the former champion and former world number one, Li Chong Wei. Needed three games there, as indeed he needed in the semi-final yesterday against number six seed Victor Axelsen. In fact, Chen Long was 8-12 down in that deciding game against Axelsen and then won 11 straight points to go 19-12 up. Tommy Sugiato, number 12 in the world ranking at the moment. He has been as high as three, a total of nine weeks at number three. Never previously beyond the second round here at the Denmark Open. His win-loss record for the year goes two titles, I was mentioning, in Russia and Vietnam. And only one previous Super Series semi-final, let alone a final. So as far as... On my left, Chen Long, China. <laughs> Chen Long to serve. The ball. Play. So the men's singles final. The three-time winner of this event, Chen Long, the world number one, the two-time world champion. Nearest to us against the unseeded Tommy Sugiato. And, of course, we've already had an unseated player win one, one of the Super long. Series events earlier this year. Kento Momota in Singapore. Three unseated players last year winning Super Series events in the men's singles. Shrikant in China Premier. Chao Tian Chen in the French and Lin Dan in the Australian. Oh, nice. yeah. Yeah. 
And I suppose that stat about unseeded players winning the men's singles Super Series titles just shows how much strength and depth there is in the men's singles discipline. Yeah, it, it has come during the last 10, 12 months, the way I see it, because before that, I thought it was pretty one-sided that it was either Chin Long, Li Chung Wei, or if Lin Dan was playing, it was about these three, yeah. the tournament victory, but that's not the case anymore. Two, one. Yeah, very and, good point. And in fact, I think Tommy Sugianto here, if, if we look at the men's singles in this Jonex Denmark Open, he's to me the biggest surprise mm. uh, because he looks in really, really good shape. Um, has often been bugged by injury, but he, he seems totally fit and, and quick on his feet. Mm. If it's enough to beat Chen Long, I'm not really sure. He's, he's struggled, as we saw from the head-to-head -head record, 7-1, and the seven um, losses all in straight games. So mm. um, I think perhaps Chen Long will be able to outmaneuver him uh, like here, but, but he looks really fast on his feet, and he was impressive against uh, Jano Jorgensen and... Um, and Cho Tian Tian, who on his hand has played some good matches. So, um, to me, the biggest surprise. Thank you. Yeah, how much of that do you think is the fact that he's now working with Rashid Sadek, the Malaysian coach who's Three, uh, working with a club now in Malaysia, Rashid Sadek? It's very, very difficult to say, but yeah. uh, of course, um, it, when you leave your association, you sort of gain some motivation that you perhaps were lacking a little bit because of you had the security of being part of a team and yeah, if you didn't win this week you probably would the next or something like that um, but but I think Four, it's it, Tommy Shukiyasu has got a very very demanding playing style mm. so um, he will be prone to injuries and, and, and um, therefore we probably will see him have some dips in his uh, performance but um, but when he's totally fit and, and at his best he's among the top 10 players on this circuit I think yeah absolutely well he's actually had to withdraw from Five, four tournaments one. this year Tommy Sugiato because of those injury problems yeah and mainly I understand bad back yeah so the obvious idea is to sort of develop his playing style a little bit, so Oof, he's not so dependent on his physical uh, shape. Yeah. So by that, do you mean he needs to develop more um, winning shots, more deception, more skills? Yeah, more deception, sharper shots in order to sort of be able to, to direct the rallies. But it's not easy, and it's it's a it's a process. Yeah. So, um, and and I guess for him, it's it's important to to get a result like this, whether it's going to be a win or a, a runners-up position, to sort of prove to himself and and to the ones supporting him that he can still play at the highest level. Yeah. And of course, there's also this. Uh, <laughs> Who's going to represent Indonesia in the Olympics? Uh, Tommy is um, probably the highest ranked at the moment, but um, there's some young players also that the PBSI, the Indonesian Association, is sort of banking on. Mm. And and we also saw, um, I don't know the result today, but I saw that uh, Sony Konkoro was in, in the final of the uh, Chinese um, Taipei Grand Prix. So the old boys are, are mm. still fighting. Yeah, and what do you think of Sugiato's sort of comeback trail? I have to say I like it. The fact that he went off to the Russian Grand Prix, Vietnam Grand Prix, where yeah. he was the number one seed in both. So, yeah. you know, he's expected to win. OK, it's pressure. But, you know, he didn't come back immediately with all Super Series no. events. He I wants to get used to winning again. Yes, and I think exactly that is a, is a brilliant idea. I mean, if you've... Sorry, um, if you've um, not experienced uh, a lot of wins over a period of time, your self-confidence eventually is damaged. So you need to rebuild it, and, and what better way than 
than winning matches and winning tournaments, getting mm -hmm. used to hearing yeah. 20 match point something yeah. and you have your the shot of yourself because it's your turn to serve yeah um that's so important uh and i you're absolutely right because winning the russian grand prix that was his first title for 25 months since winning his only super series title the singapore 2013. yeah so yeah getting back to those winning ways hearing that you know and the winner is is very very important through the record books to see whether his father, Ichuk Sugiyato, had ever won the Denmark Open, but I don't, I don't think, think he, he did. No, no, no. But Sugiyato was the first badminton player ever to emulate a parent by winning a world championship medal. Not the same colour, but first badminton player to do so. That's now been followed up with Sung Ji Hyung. Sin. Yeah. Oh, challenge, challenge, that will be a wasted challenge, I fear. Yeah. He needed, he needed Sugiata, he, he desperately needed that point, but uh, I don't think he's going to get it. No. No. Not even close. No. Uh, uh, and if it's that obvious, I, I think it's some kind of emotional slavery that you, you simply mm. hope so much that it's out. So, you, so you're taking a challenge without really controlling your feelings and saying, OK, yeah. I was wrong. Mm. And we've seen that happen uh, a couple of times. I mean, normally Ratchet Aginton is out of challenges by 9-4 in the first game. Yes. <laughs> That's well played. That's yeah. well played. And the problem for Tommy here is how, how can he actually score points against Chen Long? Um, it's not an easy task. Chen Long. Such good shot quality. Yes, not only not only in, in the offense, but in defense and under a lot of pressure, like that, for instance. Yeah, and his physicality is. Yeah. Well, both these players have got incredibly strong legs. Yeah. But the the movement with Chen Long, he moves in this crouch position. He moves low down and yeah. seems to be able to change direction very look easily. At that. Look at that. It's perfectly placed and and the shot before it seemed like Tommy was actually on his way to win that rally mm. and then he lost it yeah so uh, it's not so easy to see how he can uh, score against Chen Long and I mean Chen Long being the best player at the moment in my opinion oh, good um, yeah we, we don't often talk about how, what Chen Long should do to score against Tommy because Chen Long should just be Chen Long yeah uh, but uh, here it actually requires all his skills regarding uh, quality shots and patience. Well, there is Rashid Sinek, bronze medalist in the Atlanta Olympics.
Well, we saw an awful lot of strapping on the shoulder in his previous seconds. matches with Chenron. Doesn't seem to be quite so much strapping today. What do you think? It's still obviously an issue yeah. for him. Yeah. Maybe he didn't like the, the heavy, heavy strapping. Sometimes no, that can... It's, it's tough to, to put a strapping on the shoulder. Yeah. It's a very, very um, difficult spot to... To tape. Play. I had an interview after the match uh, against Victor Axelsen yesterday where Chin Long was um, very polite in saying that he felt that Victor was uh, at the same level as him. And uh, it's a very nice uh, gesture. I just don't think he's right. Uh, he's on the way there, but he's not there yet. Mm. Yeah, there was another very, very strong defensive shot there yeah, yeah, from Chen Long yeah. on the backhand side, and he just virtually whipped it across court yeah. quite flat. This one, yes. look at that. And that's what's a little bit easier today for Chen Long. I mean, Tommy is really, really fast on his feet, much faster than Victor, but Victor had the, um, the um, angles because mm. he's a such a tall player. So his attack was a little bit more dangerous for, um, for Chen Long yesterday. So that's probably the best chance that Tommy Sugato has got to play long rallies and simply uh, try to outrun Chen Long. But that's also difficult because Chen Long has such good quality in his shots. So mm. you tend to be the one running, uh, doing all the running. Mm. So Giato changing his mind from a backhand serve to a yeah. forehand serve. Yeah. Well played, well played. Yeah. I think that's a better strategy, not to go too much for winning points, just make sure that Chin Long don't score easy points than you. Seven, 12. Then be in good balance to see if um, some unexpected opportunities should occur. interesting because you know listening to you talk Steen and and what you've just said is the best opportunity for Sugiato you know play long rallies play patient make sure he doesn't win any easy points and so on that is the strategy for Tommy Sugiato because Tommy Sugiato as you said previously hasn't got the weapons to to play winning shots as much as no. somebody like Victor he, he, Axelsson. He needs bigger opportunities. Yeah, but Victor Axelsson, you wouldn't be saying that to him. <laughs> Definitely you? not. No, exactly. So uh, different tactics for a different style of player. Yeah. And that's what's so fascinating. Yeah, that's, that's nice. good. Yeah, Tommy's got really, really good speed in his in his legs in this tournament, and that means that if Chen Long. Anyway, we, we talked about his quality shots and so on, but not all of them are 100% uh, precise. So Tommy should be in balance to sort of capitalize from that and put him yeah. under pressure. Because I still think, and that's why I don't uh, agree with Chen Long yesterday, that Victor is the same level in, as he. I don't think Chen Long is at his best here. Mm. We saw him yesterday that he, he was making more mistakes than we normally see him do when, when we see him at a championship tournament. Yeah. Uh, of course, you could argue that he was forced to make mistakes, and, and um, I buy that to, to some extent. But, um, yeah, I still believe Chinese continent, contingent is, is, um, is an, in a build-up phase. Yeah. But not only that, after that previous rally, OK, they may have had a bit of a holiday and a, uh, some heavy training, a period yeah. of heavy training before these Super Series. 
you know, after the World Championships. But I also saw Chen Long just move that yeah. shoulder a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So, so he's carrying an injury anyway. And, and probably not doing as much racket practice as he would yeah. if he would be in, in um, absolutely uh, top form. On the other hand, uh, Thomas Ugarza has looked really, really solid as if he's been playing a lot of matches. I'm pretty sure he's been practicing a lot. Mm. Uh, uh, sure, Rashid Sidek loved the long training sessions as uh, his yeah. older brother, Misbun. Um, so I think he's got a lot of uh, ball security, 15, 10. a lot of touch that comes from Spending long hours in the hall. Yeah. Eleven, oh, the opportunity 15. to play the winning smash because he had forced. A short lift, that's yeah. only double service line, isn't it? You can tell from yeah. where his feet had landed. Yeah. I love that smash because it goes to the backhand side, cross to the backhand side of Chen Long, and Tommy has the speed to to move to the net if Chen Long should get that. And if he gets it, it's going to be a short pickup. On the other hand, if he, push, if he uses the straight smash down Chen Long's forehand, if it's a little bit inaccurate, He's going to run across the court anyway because Chen Long has these very good short pickups. Oh, what a great retrieval. Unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> Look at the quality of that last defensive shot. Totally amazing. Good yeah. call. Yeah. He only decided to leave it at the last moment then. Almost struggled to get out of the way, didn't he? Posture as he plays that net shot. Perfect control. Well. Serves over. 12 19. Serves over. So game point opportunities for the defending 20. champion. Game point 12. Uh, on the line. Yeah, first time, first opportunity, and Chen Long eases through the opening game in just 20 minutes. First game, 21, 12. to use every inch of the court. Pushes to the back. Look at that guided shot across court. Played to perfection. And so with it, the opening game. Oh, 
Well, neither of the coaches won this Denmark Open title. No. Yeah. 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 Two such great players on the coaching bench. Quite unusual. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't a super series back then no, when they were playing and, and uh, on a number of occasions uh, some of the Asian players chose to uh, bypass the tournament. And that's where the Super Series has been such a wonderful innovation yeah, for badminton because all the top players are guaranteed at the Premier Super Series and, and virtually all the top players want to play every Super Series anyway. There's one or two who, you know, if you're getting through to the latter stages of every single tournament, maybe you only pay 10 of the 12, but, you know, and it, it affects the the achievements and and and, uh, and the um, the comparison between um, contemporary generation of players and, mm. and the older generation because it was different. Now you need to have ranking points to enter yeah. into the World Championships. You didn't yeah. have to do that in in the uh, um, late 90s. Mm. You could just select four players from your country. Yeah, and, I know. And and um, the world ranking was was a very different system and very inaccurate because um, of of the way it was calculated. So so um, it's just totally different. Right now, it's it's not totally accurate in, in the doubles because of the switching of combinations. But but in the singles, it's a very very good um, guidance of um, of strength. If Tommy is to make a comeback here, he should be able to utilize um, the backcourt a little bit more freely as he's playing up against this slight drift that we think there is. It's a good run. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shot. Look at the lift, though. That's a fantastic rally by Chen Long. Yeah. Because if he was a little bit um, of a lesser mover, a little bit less physical strong, this would be challenging for him. But here he just plays along. Yeah, and it was the longest so rally of the match so far. Yeah, tough. Grueling. Turning back to the coach's bench as if to say, was that in? Should I have played it on my forehand side? Incredible defensive shots on the forehand side. Thank you. Yeah. 
couldn't control the backhand. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he did that with a broken racket. Would you believe it? Plays the perfect drop shot, hits the top of the tape, trickles over, broken strings. But his defensive shot earlier in that rally it was extraordinary. It was a desperately short lift from Sogi, Sugiato. He guessed that it was going to go down his backhand side, and he got it back. Three, four. Challenged. Five, four. He's Chen Long. He doesn't need challenges. <laughs> yeah. There it there's is. A, there's a challenge. That was clearly in, in my, <laughs> my view. Oh, he changed now. Oh. <laughs> so now. <laughs> now, well, we've got a we've got a challenge. That was clearly in, but the line judge actually changed his mind. So we don't actually need Hawkeye. He no. won't he won't waste a challenge here. <laughs> so now will Tommy Sugiato challenge? No, Tommy Sugiata knows it was in as well. Yeah. Oh, a little Six. bit of confusion. Well, Four. all credit to the line judge. You had made a wrong call, so he corrected himself. Well done. Oh, that's magnificent, isn't it? Wonderful smash yeah. straight down the line. But seeing just to emphasize the point we were making earlier about Eight. the strength and depth of the Super Series, you know, you've just had a quick look at the draw for next week in Paris, and these two players are meeting each other in the first round. <laughs> yeah, I was actually looking to see if Chin Long was entered, if he was playing the French Open was only obliged to play the Premier Super Series, but he is entered into uh, the tournament in Paris, and, and he plays Tommy Sugiato in the first round, so if there's someone who are not able to watch this final, they have a chance of a rematch on Wednesday. And it 
just shows that uh, yeah, there's so much depth into badminton right now. And in my opinion, thanks to the Super Series, yes. thanks to the Premier Series and the contract between the players that you have to attend the five Premiers, that we have matches like this one mm. day, uh, sorry, one week it's the final, the next week it's the first round. Yeah. So don't uh, necessarily uh, wait until the semifinals to buy your tickets. Mm. Uh, come and see the first round. not going to go Thomas Ugarza's way and I think he knows it. Yeah, it comes back to this point you made right at the start that he, he really hasn't got he anything to score. hurt no. Chen Long with. Well, there you go. That's yeah. proved me wrong. That's put me in my place. Yeah, but, but <laughs> in some ways, I think Jin Long got a little bit carried away there, letting out energy and uh, a good defensive shot from uh, Tommy Sugiato. Very, very short lift. And perhaps also, I think. I think Jin Long feels quite confident he's, he's going to win this match. Yeah. Oh, yeah. with a five-point advantage here in the second yeah. game. Yeah. Well, we already won the first. It does look that way, doesn't it? So if, you play, if you're playing badminton, you have the first game 21-12, leading 11-6 in the second. You got a pretty good feeling mm. that this is going to go your way. And that, but, could, that, that could be one of the reasons that Indonesia chose to sort of put more emphasis on the younger players. I mean, Indonesia is one of two or three countries in the world that has won most in badminton yeah. in, in, the, in the new era here, where since China joined and, and South Korea joined in, in the 80s. So they're not looking for um, runners-up spots. They're mm. looking to win. Yeah. And of course, the last Indonesian winner of the Denmark Open Super Series 11, was 2009. Simon Santoso Play. beat Mark Schwiebler in the final. Where we had one of the greatest comeback in the I think the semi-final, Mark Sweepler beat um, Hafiz Hashim. Being down 16-4 in the decider. Crikey. 12-6. Yeah, look at that. idea it was a good opportunity well, the problem for Sugiato is that Chen Long has been getting so much back he feels he's got to play the perfect shot to actually get the winner Yeah, 
once again. You know, you just think you've got to play a better and better and better and better yeah. shot. And you have to have the mental discipline to say, no, just stick with it. I hear again Tommy Sugiato trying to play the perfect net shot. Now, Steen, you've looked up Mark Schwebler's match against yeah, Tashin. Yeah, I, I was wrong. It, was in, it wasn't in the semi-final, it was in the second round. Mm. Mark Schwebler was behind 4-16 in the deciding game and came back to win it. Eventually went on to the final after beating Six. none other than Chen Long along the way. Oh, oh, oh. I do sometimes think Chen Long looks a, a little bit awkward with the round the head shot. I think it's his grip or something. <laughs> yeah. Bit of a pan handle, a frying pan handle I grip. think uh, around 2009 or something like that, I was asked by uh, some of uh, my Danish uh, colleagues here whether I thought uh, Chen Long would uh, become a great player. And I said, no, I really can't imagine that. And I've had to take some heat for that statement yeah. later on and I've of course had to change it because uh, he's been a, a fantastic player or he is a fantastic player but I was exactly judging by that I didn't think he had the same smooth technique like for instance Bao Chun Lei or Lin Dan or so yeah. but but as we also discussed earlier he has his own style and mm -hmm. he's sort of developed that to, to perfection and yeah. and it's so important to figure out what do I have going for me? Mm. What is it that can be my assets? Yeah. And I think he's taking the, uh, the shot quality to a totally new level. Oh, good rally. And as we discussed, um, when, when Lin Dan was playing uh, Victor Axelsen, I think, Nine, I think Lin Dan is getting um, beat by Chen Long during mm. practice. I don't think it's, it's close between them anymore. No. I think Chen Long wins it quite easily, and, and I think that hurts the self-confidence of Lin Dan. I think he should be really, really happy with the win he got in, uh, in Japan, because that's yeah. a, it's a good result for Lin Dan. If he wants to, to challenge for uh, Olympic glory one more time, I think he needs to uh, improve. Mm. Speed of movement? Yeah, or speed of movement, definitely speed of movement. Yeah, because to me, he's just not as fast as he was. And some of his, um, his stitch matches that were uh, earlier in his career, really, really lethal. Mm. They don't have the same bite in it. Uh, at the moment, no. So, um, no, but he's got his work cut out for him. But I, I just read that he left the military in order to sort of yeah. focus on endorsements and so on. And, and somebody raised the question whether, or said that maybe he needs to decide whether he wants to win Olympic gold or uh, do a lot of endorsements. And, and maybe he's already decided that. Yeah. He's got two Olympic golds back mm. home, so they're not going anywhere. Yeah, but I don't think, unless he was really focusing on uh, the Rio Olympics, I don't believe he would he would be back on the circuit, in all honesty. But you've got to rate Chen Long as the favourite. If you had to pick a favourite right now, it'd have to be Chen Long. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you, you watch him play all, shots all in, like all that. All in on Chen Long. Yeah. You know, his movements, you've just talked about his quality of shot and yeah. and it is that quality of shot when under pressure like there 
Uh, it's just fabulous. Yeah. The the um, the question mark that it always is at the Olympics is how is he going to react because he's not yeah. got a gold medal. Um, no, but he's got a medal. He's got a medal, and um, the thing is that um, if he meets someone who's got his day, he needs to be a good player as well, and he also mm. needs to have his day and and be sort of a little bit like, oh shit, I uh, I I'm playing Chen Long too early in this mm. tournament, so I might as well give everything. Yeah, uh, that could spell trouble, but otherwise, I mm. hold him as the yeah overall favorite to to win the golds no, he's just three points away from his third consecutive title here oh that's nice though from Tommy Sugiato still defiance from the Indonesian and it's easy to say now that, uh, well, maybe the uh, lower part of the draw wasn't so strong and so on, but we can't really say that. Be it's because mm. Thomas Juarez's playing style is simply not fit to, to play Chen Long. Well, that's a great match from Sugiata. 11. What a fantastic rally! It's just a, it's just a beautiful rally. It's a study in in balance. 19, 12. Yeah, I thought the way he lunged forward to the net on his forehand side and kept control of the body exactly. movement earlier in the rally it was incredible. Total control all the yeah. rally. shot once again from the defending champion and he's got eight <laughs> opportunities to retain his title and while we've seen this replay Chen Long is also enjoying the replay on the giant screen here in uh, Odense <laughs> so, yeah, I played that pretty well it's gone long and a fourth title in total for Chen Rong. A third consecutive year at the Denmark Open. Yeah, number one, he says, he is quite clearly the number one player in the world at the moment. Seven finals this year, seven titles. Just picked up the shuttle. Gives it to the service judge. Symmetry in the scoreline. 21-12, 21-12 in 45 minutes. And this is how it happened. A return of serve from Sugiato Long of the back line. Yeah. Confirmation of how he won his fourth Denmark Open title. Chen Long, the world's best. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready for the prize giving ceremony. So the prize presentation series. coming up in just a moment. Yes. Yeah, lucky Chinese <laughs> fan has got the racket, the winning racket of Chen Long. 
before the presentation. Steen, your overall thoughts? I mean, we talked earlier about the disappointment for Denmark not having players involved on yeah. finals day. Yeah, not a not a big disappointment, but the way it looked in the semi-finals, we could have hoped for one or two um, finals with Danish representation. Overall, a, a tournament with a lot of uh, major upsets. Yeah. And um, yeah, the Koreans mm. did well. Welcome, China, two titles as normal. Presented yeah. by Denisa, Super Series Premier 2015 medalists. And the runner-up from Indonesia, Tommy Sugiato. Well, for Tommy Sugiato, a fourth and Super Series tournament final and a second Premier Super Series, Series, Series tournament final. Second best from China, the Indonesia. Chen Long. A 19th Super Series title. The Onyx Denmark Open Trophy and medals and are a ninth presented Premier. by Paul Eric Hoyer, President of the BWF. So Paul Eric Hoyer. The last man to win three consecutive titles here at the Denmark Open. How fitting that it is he who is presenting the medal to the man who has just emulated that and won three consecutive titles. The Czech and Mescot are presented by Penny Holst Anderson, director of Yonex Denmark. and flowers are presented by Morten Kiebeck, Deputy Mayor of the City of Olsa. Well, it's been the ninth consecutive year that it's been held in Olsa, the Denmark Open. Ladies and gentlemen, your medalists at the Yonex Denmark Open 2015. Yeah. Uh, very nice to see so many of the fans stay for the prize presentation after our last final of the day. I'm sure we'll be having a quick word with the champion once again. It's very popular here in Denmark, Chen Long. Yeah. So respect from the fans to stay here and, and um, cheer him on for winning this tournament. Very, very popular. Always conduct himself in a smiling, friendly way. Yeah. Chen Long, congratulations. Three wins in a row here at Denmark Open for you. How does it feel to get yet another victory here in Denmark? 首先祝贺你在这次丹麦公开赛中获得第三次冠军，然后这场比赛的胜利让你感觉如何？ 呃，我觉得挺开心的吧，但我记得好像是第四次了。Okay, he is very happy now, and as he remembered, it's the fourth time he win here. What do you think of the audience here today? 你觉得这边的观众怎么样？ 我觉得挺好的，因为每一年来到丹麦都会有一个不错的表现。有这么多球迷为我加油，还有我们中国的球迷为我加油，我觉得挺开心的吧。期待明年的明年还能来丹麦吧。Uh, yes, he said uh, the support from the audience here is really enthusiastic. So he wants to say thank you to the all the audience here, and he wants to come to Denmark next year to win. Thank you. Yeah, well, we would love to see him back too. Yeah, three consecutive titles, but the four in the total for Chen Long. Thank you for joining us. And that means the we finals day is over. It all started year. with a thrilling mix, doubles, and Go Sung Kyung and Kim Han Ah in their Thank first you. ever Premier Super Series tournament it took the final. 21-9 in the deciding game against a pair who have now lost in four consecutive 
Denmark Open finals, Ahmad and Nasir. Then uh, the women's doubles never happened because a walkover was given to uh, the qualifiers, Jung and Xing, who became uh, the first winners of this uh, women's doubles title, their first ever Super Series title against the world and Olympic champions. Then men's doubles, and in their third consecutive final together, Li Yongdae and Yu Young Sung won their third consecutive Super Series title in a row, following on from Japan, Korea, and now Denmark. They really have hit very, very good form. And then it was Li Shuere, the defending champion and Olympic champion. She was just too good for PV Sindhu, who today appeared in her first ever Super Series tournament final. And as we've just seen, Chen Long, well, he is undoubtedly the best player in the world at the moment, winning the final against Tommy Sugiato, his third consecutive title here for Chen Long, his fourth in total. Well, as I say, that concludes the Denmark Open. Uh, the tour moves on to Paris next week for the French Super Series. We will be back with quarterfinal action from Paris, but in the meantime, from all of us here in Audenza, thanks for your company. Bye for now. over.